Uh, very good. You mentioned Sergio Busquets mm. uh, earlier on, and uh, this because yesterday I think it was it was he announced. Yeah. That uh, there last. will be no more biscuit games in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, uh, end of an era. He, yeah. I mean, he's not just it. It's it's kind of symbolic. I suppose beyond how good a player he's been he's kind of the last of that generation both for you know the, the Spain winning run and obviously Barcelona's you know nice I suppose nice that in the end he was managed by Xavi with whom he had such a good relationship but he's been one of my yeah favorite players over the last 15 years or so did you always like him because lots of people didn't yeah I, I I know. I mean, I can understand why. Like he's uh, there. Are, there's a mastery of the dark arts there. That's right. part of the appeal. But I, I, I think it's positional. I, I like it in a midfielder more than I like it in other players. And with him, I don't know. I just the artistry with which he kind of uh, sets the tempo of a game and kind of ushers his teammates around the pitch. I just think it's beautiful to watch and kind of a vanishing art slightly mm. you, you can't really imagine um you know even now a kind of player with Busquets profile his kind of physical profile mm. thriving to that degree because he's not you know he's not quick he's not particularly strong he's tall but not you know he's not powerful um and yet just he's just orchestrating I, I think he's fantastic mm. He was, I think, back in the day. Apart from the dark arts, he was also maybe seen as a little bit the, the Ringo of the of the uh, Barcelona midfield, you know, alongside Iniesta mm. and Xavi. Well, there's um, there's that you know that messy goal in 2011 at the Bernabeu where he's where he runs basically from the halfway line and mm. scores. I love the fact that, that starts with Busquets playing li almost like literally like a two yard pass to him. Basically, just gives him was like off you go, <laughs> you go and just run the rest of the pitch and score, which obviously massively plays down how good he was and how important he was but I think that played into that perception a little bit that he he would just kind of sit back give the ball to the really creative players which he you know he talks about that he says things like he doesn't he's happy for anyone else to score because he doesn't care about scoring himself mm. I think he scored something like 20 goals in his uh, long career really 18 years mm. yeah yeah 20 goals yeah 20 for Barca yeah good lord yeah. better than Tony Hibbert to be fair Right. I think one of those was against Chelsea in that uh, Fernando Torres 2012 mm. semi-final. I think Busquets scored in that game. Good lord. Um, but yeah, they were collector's items. But he that wasn't his get. You know, he was about sort of strutting around and setting the tempo. And he was an amazing player. And yeah, that midfield three, that Busquets, Xavi and Yester, arguably the best midfield mm. of all time. Of all time. In the conversation. I mean, that team, you know, they won, what they won, both for Spain and Barcelona, they, yeah. they were all conquering. There's a great um, moment, I can't remember which game it was, but favourite Busquets moment, straight from kickoff, and he, get, he receives it from the strikers, and there's an opposition player closing in, and he just, with a little swerve of his body... The, the opposition player literally just like falls over and goes, he's <laughs> off in the other direction, walking away. And I think that is, that is something that I love in football that you don't see so often nowadays. It's just that, that use of the body, the kind of mm. mis physical misdirection. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, I can, we did see that by somebody this season. I'm, I'm struggling to remember who it was. Uh, there's very few. Through them just by... Thiago does it a little right. bit, yeah. kind of with, with a look and with like a little kind of tilt of the hips. Um, Thiago Motta was someone who I used to love doing mm. that and it's I think it's yeah it's kind of a uh, a slightly dying art I would say not a shame some of the there was a good compilation I actually found out about this in a very 2023 way a comp uh -huh. put on by the former footballers Twitter account about Busquets and I thought is he what's happened to Busquets and uh yeah, and there's a nice comp of him. there's a nice comp of him doing things like that yeah nice. dropping the shoulder and people falling that over. account Charlie former footballers right there you go Duncan, are there any amazing numbers we should know about Busquets apart from the fact that he never scored goals? Or who, could you put his, the longevity of his career into perspective by telling us that he played alongside X when he started? Well, he, he caused problems for Manchester United in European competitions in three separate decades, which, is, which is decent going. And he, um, you know, as Charlie said, didn't score many goals, but I think he won a trophy like every sort of 22 games based really? on his... Yeah, so that, that'll do. That'll All do. Right. Hello there. If you've enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to this channel?
The Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week, bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about. We've got views, we've got stats, we've got analysis, we've got some of the best football writers around, and the whole thing is absolutely free. So have a listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below.